welcome everyone to our webinar as you're slowly rolling in. We have a poll live. Make sure you're voting in that poll. My name is Sammy Anderson. I'm our marketing manager here at Soft Acrylic. Today's webinar, as you know, we're going to be talking all about CDPs. We've got Jerry from our team. We've got James and Dave. We've brought in the big guns from Action IQ and Adobe to bring light around full circle around this topic. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, post it in the chat in the Q&A. If we don't have time to address it in the a lot of time for Q&A after, we will address it in a follow-up blog that will be sent out to everyone. And a recording will also be sent out next week, next week for you uh, registrants. Uh, if you need anything else, Jerry's the guy. I'm going to pass it off. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. And thank you for everyone um, for making this. Uh, first, I, I, it's been a while since we've done webinars, so I'm happy to to really start the series again. And it's the best I'm inviting to good friends and thought leaders in, in this space. So I, I think the discussion today is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so just quick intro, um, I'm Jerry, hello. I lead the data activation team at South Acrylic. Um, a lot of the time that we've been spending in the past uh, two years has been around data platforms. Um, my heart used to be in the DMP space. Um, this is where I had the most fun, but unfortunately that space has been slowly dying, but the good news is the CDP space is becoming real and we're seeing a lot of clients who are jumping into it. Um, so uh, we, we've worked with multiple CDPs over time. Um, very, uh, very happy to see how this, this has been growing. Um, it's not anymore just a place to store data. There's really... Uh, a different way to, to use that data and to action on it and also go to the next level. So uh, I, I, I wanna introduce uh, our panel today. So Dave from, from Adobe, James from Action IQ. Um, I'll let you guys just do a quick intro about your role today, but I just want to, to, to for, for the audiences and for any questions, I just wanna make sure this is not an Action IQ Adobe type of comparison. This is really bringing the talent and knowledge of both of these incredible CDPs for them to share with, uh, with the audience on how to prepare for a CDP or what to consider it should be things uh, to put on your list to ask your, your, uh, your existing organization or ask your vendors, just to make sure that you're uh, having the right investment and the right CDP that fits for your organization. All right. I'll stop talking for a bit. Dave, uh, let's go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, Dave Bilbrow. I'm the Director of Enterprise Architecture for Adobe's Experience Business and former teammate of Jerry's uh, back when Jerry was part of Adobe. So uh, that's how long I've been here. Um, I, I lead a team of enterprise architects who work with Adobe customers that are on the uh, sort of the platform journey that are adopting service-oriented architectures and are are, are doing great things. And my team work with our customers to help understand their needs and help understand what modernization will look like for them. Thank you. James. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for inviting me here. Um, James Myers, I uh, work as the head of MarTech strategy at Action IQ, and, and my job is really to help people. And uh, I, I love doing that um, because I've been on all three sides now. I, I was a practitioner at Lowe's Home Improvement. Um, so doing data engineering um, and then moved over to Gartner as an advisor, um, studying marketing technology, including CDPs and DMPs and beyond. And so I've, I've been able to experience the frustrations and see the benefits uh, while using my time at Gartner to corroborate and validate all of these pains as being not just ones that I've felt, but ones that other people are feeling too. So my job is to help people find shortcuts, and, and those shortcuts involve uh, data practices, uh, technology practices, and that also leads into the other side of the coin, which is change management and more. So excited to be here, uh, and, and let's, let's dive right in. Awesome. Okay, this is great. I, I, think, I feel like I'm on a game show, but this is, this is really exciting. Okay, so I, I, I looked through our audiences, so there, there's a good mix. Um, folks who I've identified from Adobe, some from ActionIQ, some from other vendors, and some who are clients um, or potential clients for CDP. Maybe we can start with initially with, uh, with a definition of what the CDP is. Um, James, do you want to take, since you're, you come from Gartner, so you, you probably have that perfected. Would love to get your your definition in the simplest way you can describe a CDP. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try to be really short, and then we can double click if we want to. But 
the whole point here is is to create a a, um, a system that allows organizations to be self-serving and to eliminate bottlenecks. What that means is that you're looking for a technology that unifies data, um, enables the um, the business teams to uh, reduce those bottlenecks with their technical resources, and instead be self-serving when it comes to audience analytics and when it comes to campaign and experience orchestration. So that CDP serves as the hub that centralizes data and then democratizes it for insights and for orchestration. Um, hopefully that was short and sweet, um, but yes. we can double click if you'd like. No, this is great. Dave, what do you think? Do you have a similar definition or, or do you feel this is, this is good? I, I, I thought that was good. I mean, we, um, we, we see it defined differently depending on the type of customer that we talk to. And, you know, at, at Adobe, we deal with, you know, a lot of really big customers and then also some really small customers. And I found that like the, the definition and what they're trying to accomplish depends a lot on sort of a, a combination of things where like how central is their experience to their business. Um, there are there are some uh, some industries where it's a little more important than others maybe. And then uh, also secondly, like what, you know, what level of IT investment do they have? Uh, those are sort of like two, you know, if I were to make a graph like X, Y, those would probably be my two, uh, my two axes. And uh, exactly what what it means to them would would fall somewhere uh, in the graph depending on those two things. Makes sense. Okay, so let's let's talk a bit about um, CDPs. The way both of you defined it, um, it it's not news, right? Like it's not something where it's a technology that is. Um, that we just heard about a year ago, right? Like it sounds to me that it's something that's been around for a while, right? We, it's a place where you're storing data, accessible, uh, you're able to segment, it's uh, you're able to bring customer data, able to action off of it, right? This is a feel like a story of marketing automation that was doing back, you know, a few years back. And a lot of B2B, I would say, used to do something similar. What is your, how did this really change? Um, in the past few years? Like why is now the hottest thing you hear, even a company like us, that we are doubling down on making sure we're up to speed on CDPs, um, what changed? Is it that uh, the DMP space is not as hot anymore? Is it the cookie, the privacy, the move to first party, maybe all of those, but from your perspective, and, and maybe James, you, you can shed some light on that, but and then we'll pass it to Dave, but your perspective, what are the biggest uh, catalysts now to make CDPs like a, a must in every organization? Yeah, I'll go real quick, Jerry. That's a great question. I think there's three factors. Um, the first is that um, the third party cookie, of course, is, is going away um, a bit slower than we may have anticipated, but, uh, but that's okay. Um, the second element though, is that customers themselves are expecting seamless experiences. And it's not just in marketing and, and outbound, but also in inbound experiences and call centers, uh, websites and more. And so the, the realization here is that the organization itself um, has a desire to become customer centric, right? And if you think about why that's beneficial, uh, Deloitte did a study a couple of years ago and they found out that customer centric organizations were 60% more profitable than those that weren't. And so the, the, the value there is tremendous, but the challenge is organizations are not designed or organized today in a way that enables those seamless experiences across channels. And so the CDP comes to light as the, the technology that doesn't just support marketing, but it also supports experiences no matter where the customer shows up. So it's kind of being viewed as the, um, as the, the solution that is of the, <clears throat> the next generation for support of all these channels in a, in a seamless fashion. Okay. Dave, um, what are, what are, from, from your angle, how, what do you see has been the biggest catalyst? Um, and knowing that Adobe, you know, Adobe has a, a DMP in space, right? And you guys have a, a big marketing stack. Um, and with the platform, the fraction of that is a CDP, but there's a lot more that can be done. Um, what, what do you see has been the acceleration in getting that available and, and more used in the industry? You know, I think all the way back to, I think it was 2015 or 16. And I think you and I may have been sitting together at, at uh, sales kickoff when like Brad Renter talked about experience as your business. That's going almost a little too well. 
um, it's like customers are making experience their business in, in ways that I you know, never would have thought possible. And that investment is driving uh, sort of a different consumption pattern of technology where fewer customers want to buy applications. They want to buy building blocks that they're able to use uh, as part of a larger architecture because like the actual architecture to deliver an experience and uh, you know, Jerry, actually, I'd love uh, your view on this, given uh, given your your day job. Uh, now, the actual architecture that builds an experience is bigger than any two vendors, really three vendors. You know, I mean, like there's just like massive ecosystems getting built. So, the ability uh, of of a of a tool to to be part of a service oriented architecture where it's got to fit nicely in between like twelve different things that might all be different. Like that's that's what's really driving the consumption pattern. Uh, for for CVPs right now is customers are building a large stack that is uniquely theirs to try and make a, a differentiated uh, customer experience. And as part of that, uh, there's a couple of different needs around uh, customer data and like being in the moment and being able to uh, be dynamic and drive things and everything else. And so uh, that that's what's really like the questions that I get, especially from our largest customers are, like they'll show me a massive, uh, you know, architecture diagram and they'll be like, we've got this like gap here and this gap here and then this gap here. We need like some specific components. I think you guys make all of them, you know, that fill these little things. And that, that, that's really where the, where the discussions are happening, uh, at, at least uh, from, you know, from my POV right now. Actually, this is a good segue because I, I wanted to, to talk about like, what are some of the biggest questions that customers are coming to you so you, you called one uh, but what else can you think about that's been repeatedly you're hearing uh, like I'll say from my side um, it's been I really want to expand and enrich my first party data right and and I think it's been the biggest eye-opener that um, if you are uh, a client that doesn't have strong first party data CDPs are not, are not magical, where they're just all of a sudden, you're gonna go from having no first party data to having first party data. Now, so that's, that's been a gap, right? But there is, and I, I, I hope we can talk about it at some point today, is the whole identity graph that CDPs offer. And this is, we're seeing it where Newstar and Action IQ are, are teaming up and there's a defined solution. Adobe is opening up to work also with LiveRamp and Newstar and Mercury from Merkle. Um, but, but that's been like one of the biggest questions is that I know first part data is important. I don't have it very well today. I need a CDP. Can CDP help me in enriching that? What could be some of the questions you're hearing from your customers? Dave, if you want to start. Identity is usually number one, two, and three uh, is you know identity, and you you hit the nail on the head. I mean, we we saw this coming a long time ago, and said we need to build a toolkit that empowers our customers to work with our identity, their own first party identity, and then whatever third party identity uh, that that they want. We need to be able to apply that uh, very simply and robustly, you know, throughout an architecture, and then. Um, almost all the rest of the questions that we get are somehow related either to uh, security, privacy, or latency. I mean, like those are, uh, again, like, like this is a, like a CDP is a cog in a much larger machine, uh, typically, at least, um, you know, for, for my customers. And um, we're answering a lot of those types of questions around uh, number one, um, lar large companies, especially, uh, like one came across this morning that's got like 30 uh, separate entities uh, within, uh, you know, within their enterprise. And they've got like a, like almost like a comical list of like, well, entity A cannot see B, but needs to see C, D, L, J. And yeah, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to be, this is going to be a lot. For, yeah, it's going to be a lot for us to uh, uh, parse together. But you, you, you see where I'm going with that though, that like the, the questions are around like, you know, sort of robust SOA functionality, um, you know, security, obviously, I mean, uh, that, that has been an interesting thing for us is that um, this takes us kind of like deeper into the territory of data that IT normally, uh, you know, keeps a tight hold on than some of our other products. So like we've been in more discussions uh, over, you know, security and, and those kinds of things lately than, than ever before. Uh, and then again, latency, you know, there, uh, and, you know, uh, James said on this earlier, like it's about building an in the moment experience and a number of other things. And 
uh, milliseconds stack up. You know, so we, we need to be able to receive, process, and send data back out very quickly. Great. James, how about you? What have you been hearing uh, from customers? Yeah, identity, just as David said, it's uh, it's one, two, and three. And and the reason why is you think of identity as, as perhaps the, the most, uh, you know, not the most flashy subject, but it's the backbone, right? It's the backbone of accurate insights. It's the backbone of, of accurate targeting, and it's the backbone of accurate recommendations. So if you think about identity, right, there's, there's components of it that uh, are going away and there's components that can be strengthened uh, with what you, you partner with today and what you can do in house. So uh, it comes up a lot, but I think that the biggest, um, the biggest takeaway here is that if any vendor comes in and says that they are the silver bullet or the, you know, the, the quick fix uh, for, for third party cookies and all the legislative approaches here, um, they're lying. Right? And that's not to be uh, punchy or something, it's, it's the truth. And so instead, the, the proper approaches to take here are, are to set yourself up with being flexible, right? So that you can adapt to the legislation that's going to come out next year or the year after and, and not be caught into one fixed approach. So I think some things like where, you know, Jerry, you mentioned you may not have a CDP that's going to create all your first party data for you. I completely agree. And uh, that's often something that we have to fight against. Um, but you can create experiences today that, that create a value exchange and first party data is something that you receive in, in exchange for providing something valuable back to the consumer. So that that's one way to, to innovate today while you're getting ready for the, the more legislation and more changes that are coming down the road. Um, there's another other approaches here. You, you know, you mentioned uh, network-based uh, graph, um, things like um, like the new stars and the, Mer the Merkles and beyond. You know, they have access to data that that no individual brand does. So, for example, they have credit bureau data, so they know your vacation house versus your primary residence, and they can stitch those two profiles together when when it, one organization would never know how to do that themselves. Um, then there's first party tags that are server side versus client side and, and the benefits of those too. So um, there's things you can do today, but please don't say that uh, you found the silver bullet because uh, right. you know, you'll be caught. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel that um, in some cases where we've been in a good amount of evaluations for CDPs and, and sometimes the, we've been pushing our customers and to, to really uh, have a priority of like what matters. Because like when you look at their wish list, it's like pages, right? Of, of like crazy stuff. Like almost one of them is like, who's gonna pick up my groceries? Um, like a CDP cannot do that for you today. But it's, it's a list of things. And then we have to take that and prioritize to be like, what matters to you the most? Because not to say like whether a CDP can solve all these problems or not, but end of the day, you need to pick the ones that are the most relevant. Dave, you look super now smart with these glasses. I love it. I, I, sh I should have put my glasses. I, like I, I, I forgot to put them on at the beginning. You know, if I stare at Zoom for too long, uh, you know, I start to get like the crazy blue light headache. So no, you're good. You're good. So, so yeah, I, I, I agree with both of you guys, uh, your input on identity. Um, now, here's something that's interesting. And I feel that um, you know, customers are, are not anymore like a small shop of marketers. They have strong like IT departments, strong data engineering departments. They have data lakes, right? So um, in many cases, they have their own instance, whether it's on Google or Amazon, where they are hosting this data and they're centralizing it. Maybe it's not the most efficient, like what vendors like Adobe and ActionQ offer, but they do have it. Um, what stops clients or what, what is your advice for clients who are thinking about, hey, I can just build this. I don't need to go and move my data to an Adobe shop or, um, or Action IQ. And instead, I'll keep it in my instance. I'll, I'll bring an identity management like LiveRamp or, or anyone else and do the stitching. And then we will have folks you know, writing code on top, data scientists. And then we'll activate based on APIs. Since anyway, all your tools are API friendly, we can do the same. Um, obviously, there, this is a lot to unpack, but buy versus build. What, what is, where do you get, I know where you stand, but 
what is your advice would be uh, beyond that? Well, those are those are two separate questions, really. Um, the, the the first question around, you know, yes, customers have more advanced infrastructure now, and that's, uh, I mean, you know, I've got a, a team, you know, in the twenties now, where I mean, Jerry, when when you and I were doing this, it was like. You know how many of us were there? You know, a handful. Like, yeah. you know, the customers have gotten more complex. You know, we're we're changing to adopt, and the the conversation I find myself having like three times a week is um, based around this idea that their customer view within their data warehouse is the same as the CDP, and it, it's not. You have to look at the quantity and the velocity of the data involved. You know, a CDP. Uh, deals with a far smaller amount of data and it deals with it in a, in a much faster fashion. You know, you're not waiting like hours and days for batch processes to load things into a data lake or for a customer view to process. You're, you're working with data on the fly. On the other hand, like the size of a record in a CDP versus the size of a record in, uh, in, a, in a customer view of a data lake, it, it's a fraction, you know, it's a, it's a, it's much, much smaller. I mean, I, I've, talk to customers and I'll say like, how many, how many fields are in your customer view? And they'll say like 2,409, you know, and I'm like, goodness, like that's, uh, that's quite a few fields. You know, I, I think um, uh, we, we typically uh, take a smaller portion of that data and, and make it sort of live and dynamic and in the mo moment. And that's, but once you start talking that way, and, you know, I'm a big fan of, of graphs uh, with, you know, uh, record size and record and uh, data velocity, you know, on the two axes, and you explain that like your data warehouse lives in like this entire space here, and then your CDP is over here, and they're just sort of different jobs for different functions. And that then gives way into the build versus buy discussion, where you start to have conversations around things like, well, yes, you've built your data warehouse. No, you're not going to replace your data warehouse or your customer view with with uh, you know, a, a CDP product, but do you want to manage this section of, of what this functionality does in terms of speed and size and everything else? Do you wanna build out like a whole separate set of infrastructure for that? Or does it make more sense to buy something that your marketers will be able to use on day one? That's, that's a great way um, to explain it. Thank you, Dave. James, what about you? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I completely agree with what Dave was saying. and and particularly the area where you think of an enterprise data warehouse as being a fantastic tool um, for things like enterprise BI, enterprise uh, analytics. Um, and when I say enterprise, that's the operative word. I'm, I'm not just talking about customer analytics. I'm talking about customer plus other domains. It could be customer plus product. It could be customer plus um, store branches. It could be customer plus um you name it, vendors and more. Even even the thought process of um, of employee as a domain of data. That's all within your enterprise data warehouse. And whereas the CDP is is largely just your customer data, and, and it'll include any product data or beyond that needs to support customer experiences and intelligence. But to Dave's point, it's not all of this data. It's it's a subset of it. When you think about build versus buy. I, uh, I've got perhaps a unique perspective here because I did build a homemade CDP for Lowe's back in 2014. And thankfully they stopped using it last year. I'll just say this off the top. Thankfully they stopped using it because it really just was a, you know, a, a data warehouse with every bit of customer data organized inside of it, right? And I created a single profile for every consumer and it was really great and beneficial towards personalization and analytics, but here's where it failed. Where it failed was to Dave's point about the end users, right? So if 80% of your organization doesn't know how to write SQL, well, then they're still experiencing bottlenecks, right? Mm -hmm. And those are the people who have PLs who are going to get um, in trouble when they don't meet their business goals. So if, if you're saying to those 80%, well, hey, you've got to get in line and create a ticket every time you need a segment or an insight or an experience to be activated, well, then you're not empowering those people to meet their PL objectives. And so that's really where the CDP brings so much value beyond having a homemade enterprise data warehouse with all your customer data in it. It's, it's for democratizing data and self-serving those teams uh, to meet those business objectives and iterate on them on a daily basis. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, this is, this is a great. I mean, given that you have the experience seeing that firsthand and then um, 
being on the different side from the client and also being the vendor. I think that's a great perspective. Uh, okay, so who are the folks that you guys are mostly engaging with when it comes to CDP from a client side? Like, is this, uh, for, for us, we get a mix, right? Sometimes the marketers are coming in and saying, hey, I went to a conference or I heard about this. Uh, salespeople are knocking on my door. I see value in it. I need your help in evaluating this for us. On the other side, we also see IT coming in and saying, hey, we are at a point where the marketers are pushing that they want access to data and data today is living in an EDW somewhere. It's not accessible. We can do things, but it's taking a lot of manual work. It's very time consuming. We want to get a CDP. Um, is there a specific group within an organization that you see, I have my own point of view, but I wanna hear yours, that you, you see is a better fit to be driving the CDP conversation? If, if marketing and IT aren't both at the table, then that customer is probably not ready to have a real conversation. Right? Okay, we all agree on it. Nice. Okay. All, I mean, I, I have, um, you know, I've explained to a lot of uh, really disappointed salespeople that if IT is not there, that they're going to show up eventually and uh, they will, uh, you know, they'll have their own POV and uh, your your customers in marketing are not going to be able to to overcome it. I mean, you just you have to you have to include all the right stakeholders uh, in the conversation, or else whatever you decide isn't going to end up being the final decision. And that's uh, you know that's just the way it goes. James, yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I'm not sure there's a whole lot more to add. But I've I've experienced it on all sides, right? And I was on the business side at the end of my career at, at Lowe's, and I I had to go and uh, you know buy cookies, buy donuts, buy anything to get the IT group to, to say, yeah, we support your, your project here. And, um, and even that wasn't easy all the way around too. It, it took a lot of time and, uh, and convincing of folks that I was actually saving them bandwidth so that they could focus on other foundational projects that, uh, that, that were being delayed because of resource constraints and more. So ultimately you need all these people to agree that the solution is the right one for empowering the 80% of the organization that doesn't know SQL. It doesn't mean though that the IT organization shouldn't feel like they have a foundational asset to manage themselves. So when it comes to identity, you know, identity is usually something that IT does manage, right? Does everybody agree with that? And the marketer is generally not someone who's going to define the rules for deduplicating profiles and for determining what source is the right source? Um, and so IT does have a big seat at the table and, and it ends up needing to be a collaboration instead of a, uh, a siloed effort. Got it. Okay, so, so this is, uh, if, I, if we're making a checklist of things that clients should know um, as they step into the CDP space, and I think this is, this is part of what we want folks to walk away with is like, how do they know they're ready? <clears throat> so one of them is, you need to have the right people um, involved. And we this should be a co collaboration between IT and marketers. Um, okay, what about data? Like clients with their data, um, some are in advanced, some are in a database sitting somewhere that is not accessible by internet. Um, I've seen it both. Uh, and these are big and small organizations. It, how important is, data and data being clean and organized and taxonomy, data dictionary and mapping prior to getting into the CDP space. Uh, James, what's your take on that? Yeah, it goes all over the map, right? It depends on, on the vendor that you, you pick and that's also related to the use cases that you're trying to achieve. Uh, for example, if you're an e-commerce shop and, and that's your one commerce channel, um, you probably have cleaner data than someone who is multi-channel with uh, stores and call centers and more. And so the, the point here of bringing those up is that your organization has to be comfortable with supporting the complexity of use cases and the complexity of channels that require those use cases. So if you're, if you are in an organization that's multi-channel, for example, you're going to need someone who is a data analyst or perhaps a data engineer to be involved in the data prep component of, of your CDP implementation. Right. And the reason why is because the data needs to be structured. And I think this is what Dave was saying a few minutes ago, 
the data is going to be structured in a different way than you may store it already inside of your data lake or inside of your enterprise data warehouse. It's going to be structured instead in a way that's more scalable, in a way that is more performant, in a way that enables different use cases, it's lower latency. Um, and so the whole point here is that the data analyst or the data engineer brings expertise to the table. They know your data definitions. They know how tables are joined together and they know what ways your organization is going to uh, be using that data to fulfill those use cases. It may mean that they need to create a new variable. Uh, and so that data analyst brings the SQL capability to build those new variables and, and so forth. So it's not a, it's not a complex process always, but um, if your organization has particularly dirty or de uh, highly duplicated data, um, it's worth the time to have someone with expertise at the table. So the notion, and I've heard this many times, but the notion of saying, I'm just going to bring the data I have into the CDP and the CDP is going to clean it all up. Um, that's, that's a wrong way to think about it. We all agree on that. Somebody's going to clean it up. Dave, you can go. I mean, if you have a, um, if you have a problem with data hygiene or, or data, uh, you know, that you need data cleanup, uh, you should do that uh, prior to investing in a CDP uh, or, or as part of the process. I mean, you know, Jerry, as a, as, as, as a partner, you know, you, you know that there's a lot of cleanup that you do when you make these recommendations. I mean, that's a good thing to do in one fell swoop is, you know, as you're doing and building some foundational data infrastructure work, it gives you the, you know, the capability uh, to and that's a good time to integrate something new is probably the, the simplest way to say it. So um, that's, you know, that, that's how I would look at that is um, don't, I mean, if, if the CDP investment is a force function for you to do some foundational data cleanup, you know, to build a better, uh, you know, build a better data infrastructure for yourself, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the CDP itself isn't going to fix it. It's, uh, you know, uh, there, there's an expression I'm thinking of. It's not appropriate, but uh, something in, something out. You know what I yeah. mean? You can say garbage in, garbage out. I, okay, gar I yeah, garbage, garbage out. <laughs> yeah. <you> <laughs> yes, I I felt that this is something that was a surprise to some clients. Um, and the only people I blame is just sales, no, not no vendor in particular, but it's it's a selling uh, point to say like just bring your data in, and then you'll be able to do whatever you want with it. But I would say it's very important that customers know that there needs to be work done on the data. And in some cases, um, different depending on the vendor, right? Like Adobe is a schema-based, um, Action IQ is relational database. So it, it's, it's a little bit different, right? So there is a different prep and different setup. And that's where the evaluation and looking at these CDPs will, will make sure that you know how this data will be structured. Um, Okay, so what about time? Um, how I know both of you guys are pretty much in the same um, ballpark of standing up a CDP, right? Somewhere between, I think, the 90 days to the 120 days from beginning to end. Um, but how much is this time consuming that is on the client side? The customers, we said that we need IT and marketers, right, to be involved. But I don't think they understand how much they need to be involved in this process. Can you guys talk about like the the investment that the client needs needs to do beyond just the check, but the time investment that needs to be put in to make sure that the CDP is set up with the right use cases, with the right data, and with with actually the right structure to support it post uh, standing it up. James, what do you think? Oh. Uh, Dave, I'll follow you. I went first last time. Thanks, though. You know, I'll, I'll just say that all depends on how well they want it to go. And then, uh, James, you can take it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to talk a little more. What, what is it, that, how well they want it to go? Yeah, I mean, some more. you know, the time investment, I mean, I, I've seen customers try to shortchange it, and I, I've seen customers invest heavily. Uh, we have, like, one customer comes to mind there in uh, year two uh, of their CDP journey, and they laid out like a very clean change management program. They have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of tech debt that they're retiring as part of that process. And, you know, we're, we're excited for the progress they're making. You know, it's a massive company in an industry where companies don't typically make dramatic moves. So it's, you know, they're doing it right. And they've, they've not really had anything go wrong uh, is probably the best way to put it. You know, they're, they're not making any mistakes. 
Um, we've also had customers that were like, we need this to be up and running in 60 days uh, type of thing. And, you know, again, it's just a matter of the trade-off of what you can do very quickly and how much the customer is willing to invest. But I'd say like having a strong champion at the customer is usually the most important thing. You know, is there a champion that has the right organizational alignment to get things done That's that's got a, you know, sort of a mandate around this project? Because, I mean, it, it, it will touch every corner of, of an enterprise before it's done. Yeah, Dave, I was going to say the same thing there. Simply, you know, think of an executive sponsor. Uh, champion's another word, uh, same thing. But the, the whole point here is that you've got someone who is essentially signing the check and or um, ensuring that there is accountability, right? And the next level of accountability goes down towards uh, tactical work. And so there's three roles that we recommend being involved in an implementation. You've got um, the, the technician, which is the data analyst, or if, if, if necessary, a data engineer. Um, the other is the project manager, right? And the project manager knows the organization, they know the, the stakeholders involved, um, they can keep people on track and they can ensure that uh, use cases are not just defined, but implemented on time and, and in budget. Um, and then the final group is, is your actual end users. So your, your, your marketers, your business teams. Um, and the point here is that the investment needs to go across these different uh, personalities or stakeholders, um, ensuring that uh, use cases are defined at the beginning uh, properly and within proper scope um, so that they can be delivered on time and under budget. Um, Jerry, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm along the same. Um, we've seen, the most success I've seen is having on the customer side, um, two folks, one that is an architect, technically heavy, understands data, understand systems, and then also a business stakeholder that is representing the marketers. Because there is so, there is gonna be a lot of hand-holding throughout the process of explaining why this needs to be done in a certain way in a CDP. Not only why, how is this gonna impact business as usual? How do we go from how we're doing things today to we do it with a CDP? in the mix, right? Like the CDP is not coming in, in most cases I've seen, it's not coming in as a clean slate, right? It's, it's coming in as a, uh, a tool that it's going to sit between already existing tools or it's gonna bring its own squad with it, right? So if we're thinking about a CDP that is gonna allow you to do um, site personalization in an orchestrated fashion or allows you to do um, email triggers in an orchestrated fashion or push notification, right? It's a, it's a tool that is gonna be sitting in between. You, you might already existing have a push notification system that is happening maybe manually or it's happening with a service that is getting data from the EDW. So now you're putting the CDP between the EDW and the end. And, and that is, I mean, that's gonna disrupt things. And in many cases, there's a lot of time spent in explaining to the tech people, how does this, how is this change gonna happen? And then also explain to the business, how is this not gonna impact what they do, you know, the business as usual. Um, I think it's, it's a gap where not many customers see the importance of that. And, um, the most success I've seen is where customers early on identified these two roles as well as a PM, right? Like someone, hundred uh, percent, this is a giant project on from a vendor side, but also from a customer side and PMs need to make sure that they're in sync, not only on the process of how they're doing, you know, standing up the product, but also how are they managing what the marketers want or how these use cases marketers are going to be excited they're going to come in and they're just going to say we want to do all these things and and then you're going to say okay this is great but hey this year on the first and your contract you're only able to going to do this next year we'll do more so that type of planning you know you can think of it of like a program management or a project but that is crucial to make sure that the customer feels that their investment is in the right place 
and feels that this project is going to go like change what they do today, but change it to the better. Yeah, completely agree. Use cases and scoping step one, it ensures alignment. It ensures that they're attached to business goals and outcomes and ensures that the, the solution can actually deliver upon them. So we, uh, we, we are highly, highly aligned there. Awesome. So then another thing on the list is change management, right? I, I hate the word of digital transformation just because it was super, I mean, used so much uh, in my past career, in my current career. Thank God that's retiring. And now it's becoming change management. Um, I think it's something where not many clients are aware of how much disruption the CDP is going to bring to their organization. Um, how do you guys, what's your take on how do they prepare for that? Um, and also maybe explain from your point of view why it's going to disrupt an organization. Dave, what's your input? What's your take on that? Well, you know, you have people, process, and, and technology, and, you know, we can sell you technology, but people and process, you know, you have to work with uh, somebody like Softcrelic uh, to, to get a good recommendation on exactly what to do. But, um, I, you know, in terms of exactly how to manage change, I mean, I think that's specific to the, to the customer, but I, I will say that effective change management and planning for um, how you're going to uh, how you're going to integrate, you know, into your work stream. It's not just the determinant in who's successful and not successful. It's also like the number one determinant in the customers that continue to get value uh, from their investment because uh, our, our customers that have adopted, uh, you know, a CDP or, you know, in our case, a platform and uh, have integrated really well uh, into the way that they do things day to day. They continue to build new use cases. They continue to get additional value from that same investment. Customers that haven't managed change very well, uh, they tend to like solve a specific problem uh, with a CDP, and then that's what the CDP does. And of course, like CDPs are really toolkits. They're not, uh, you know, they're not like sort of contained applications. I mean, they do a lot of things, and the, the bigger you dream, the more it can do for you. So managing that change effectively and uh, sort of integrating those new capabilities into the way you do things is really the key to unlocking additional value down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would add on that, um, you know, the CDP is, is bringing a ton of value towards that, that um, transition to becoming customer centric. And so if the organization is centered around channels or around product today, um, they're only going to get a certain amount of value from this type of, of software. And the value here is, is in creating a desire within the organization to want to change, right? So if you were to say, um, if, if you change, then you will receive a 20 to 40% uh, increase in your revenue, right? And, and that's not what I'm saying a CDP will do, but what I am saying will deliver that value is when you change the organization to working in an agile marketing format, right? So pods where you're centered around the life cycle stages of the customer, right? And there's been studies by McKinsey that have shown a 20 to 40% increase in revenue simply by organizing in those pods, right? So the value here is, is to say, if you manage your change and if you have a desire to change, then you will be uh, more successful. And then the accountability is the other side of that, where the executive sponsor comes in and says, you know, I'm going to be accountable for delivering these results and I'm going to be the one that you're going to need to do roll-ups to on a monthly basis and show me what you're working on, show me what success you've had, show me where you failed and, and what you've learned as a result of it. But that accountability is the other side of the coin for desire. And, and so you need both of those in order for the, the change management to become a, a, a reality. Um, Dave's point is exactly correct, right? If organizations that, that do commit to it and do it well, they're, they're dreaming and their use cases continue to get more sophisticated, more channels, more experiences, and, um, and, and the value continues to be a, a positive ROI over and over and over and over again. The organizations that don't manage their change and, and hang on to legacy processes and siloed experiences, um, they're, they're only going to get a, 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 you know, a finite amount of value from it. Yep. Yeah, I think, um... I agree with both of you. Um, I, what I would add for customers who are in, in the space or getting ready to get a CDP, 
um, is there needs to be uncomfortable conversations around who's going to do what when the CDP is here. Uh, because things change. So let's take an example. Um, you know, one of the biggest thing I, I hear from clients, I said from identity, is they want a CDP because they want to create customer journeys, right? An orchestrated journey where based on whether you're a new customer or you're abandoned uh, a purchase, we're going to put you on this journey where we'll figure out what is the best device, the best channel, and that is going to trigger a journey there. Uh, before a CDP space, you have an email team, you have a push notification team, you have a web analyst, um, you know, site an analytics and site personalization. You might have a mobile team. When a CDP comes, there is all of these teams are going to be mobilized. They're not going to be doing things the same way they do it today because now campaigns are going to be multi-channel and cross-channel. Um, it's not, there's nothing in the books. I don't have anything in my cheat sheet that tells you here's the path to, to adopt that and be able to do it right. The, the success we've seen is having these conversations of saying, okay, what, we do, what we're doing today, who are the folks that, what they're doing, how can we map them into the new way of CDP? And also, how can we create a structure where folks are, are working together, not against each other? Um, and it, and the, the biggest thing I, I want to make sure happens when a CDP comes in is not isolate people, like not centralize data and isolate people. I want to centralize data and I want people to work more together. Um, but in some cases, if it's not well managed from the beginning, you end up having folks saying, you know what, I'm just going to use the CDP to push to social. So I'm going to send to Facebook and that's all I care about. But then, hey, the Facebook channel is a touch point out of like other touch points or other journeys. You need to coordinate with others. Um, so I would think have those uncomfortable conversations early on and and have that accountability you will get the most success mm -hmm. yeah, and even having someone that can come in and tell a story and say you know we were just like you and we organized in this way and this is the campaigns that and experiences that we produced and now we behave in a in a collaborative uh you know pod-based approach and the benefits we're receiving are x y and z and you know if we were to give you some advice then follow a b and c to get there and, and jerry that's where you can provide so much value you can you can tell those stories and, and bring those two parties together. Absolutely, all I got is stories. Um, okay, so this is going really fast. I just want to make sure I look at some of the questions. Um, Neil uh, just added the Action IQ partners with all data services companies, not just Newstar. Thank you, Neil. Um, yeah, I, not only Newstar, I'm aware that they are partnering with others. It's good to know. Uh, there's another question. What kind of volume is ideal for a CDP? If an organization has less traffic, is CDP ideal for them? Is there a benchmark? Dave, I know they're from a, from a real-time CDP and experience platform, the profile for a customer is you, you want to design it to be as light as possible so that it can run as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but is there, so there is a cap that is recommended for um, I was gonna say, usually we get that question from the other angle, which is I've got, you know, um, you know, 10 pounds of, of dirt. I want to fit in a five pound bag uh, type of yep. you know, type of approach, but, um, or, or, or the, even the opposite perspective of like, I have X number of hundred million transactions per minute or per second or whatever. And I need to, you know, I need you guys to be able to accommodate it in terms of, uh, volume that's ideal. Uh, it, it depends on the experience you're trying to build, really. I mean, it, it's less about um, what's worth it in terms of, of volume or, or data that you're storing and more about how, how critical is that data. I mean, the story I always love to tell is uh, adobe.com. I mean, most people know us from Photoshop and Lightroom and those kinds of tools. And if you call to talk about your Photoshop subscription, the person on the other end of the phone is, is, is understanding in real time your behavior uh, across uh, Adobe tools and, and uh, Adobe creative tools and other things based on our CDP. And that was the original use case that we built it for. 
that um, that ability to give that context to the people who are talking to our, our Creative Cloud customers is worth its weight in gold. And it's it's not it's not a particularly heavy profile. There's like a handful of attributes uh, that they primarily rely on and bring into our, our call center. So um, it, it depends more on the use case and the, you know, sort of the intrinsic value uh, of the customer experience you're able to provide for it. But we don't think there is, so in the short, like, I don't think there's a, like a threshold, low threshold to say, you know, I mean, if you have enough data that you're able to do yeah. stuff with it today, you bring the CDP that you want to target these people based on a journey or be able to get them to be able to split them into different audiences. I think, I think it's possible. James, anything else you want to add on that? Yeah, that's it's kind of simple in my my perspective. It's not just large organizations that are finding value and success with the CDP, but it's small organizations too. So what that tells me is that the quantity of data that you have is not a predictor of your success and the value you received from it. Uh, one more you know important call out here is that vendors often charge by the quantity of data that you have or the number of experiences that you're trying to produce, and so you won't be paying a big amount of money if you don't have that much data and don't have that many experiences. But what I will say is that if you think about where you're going to make your money as an organization going forward, the cost of acquisition of getting new customers is going up and up and up. And with, with third-party cookies going away, it's only going to go higher. And so if you think about where you can be more efficient with your spend, it's on loyalty and retention. And the way to increase your retention and your loyalty is by having greater customer experiences. You need to have great tools and processes in place in order to create improved customer experiences. And that's what the CDP is really designed to do. Yep, yep, that's a great point. All right, and there's one more question. Uh, while thinking about CDP adoption, do you think any scenarios where consolidation, standardization of other tech components and tech ecosystem? Um, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Um, I do, so obviously the CDP, in my opinion, um, in many in many cases, is replacing other existing tools in your stack, right? Like a typical one, folks are coming in and saying, I do marketing automation today, can CDP take some of that? Or I have a DMP that um, I want to use it mostly for social, or I want to limit, you know, move from a DMP to a CDP, can a CDP do that work? Um, so I I would say be in an, in a in a in a mindset that there needs to be some tech debt and cleanup within your marketing stack uh, uh, when you bring a CDP. Otherwise, I don't think you're doing it right. You guys want to add anything on that? Yeah, I would simply add that um, the CDP is is doing the job of centralizing your data and, and making it available for you know a centralized audiencing or centralized um, analytics. So if you're performing um, uh, data storage, or if you're if you're storing data in your your ancillary technologies like your ESP or your um, your DMP or or other other uh, spokes as as we call it, you have an opportunity to rationalize the data storage element. It doesn't mean that you can get rid of your ESP. It doesn't mean that you can get rid of your your social tools either. Um, but if you're storing data there in it, in its grand amount, um, the CDP just job is to pull that into one place and then only send the audiences and the required attributes to those tools for delivery. So they become delivery spokes instead of a, a data hub. Yeah, this, um, you know, th this, this uh, category of products, I mean, it serves a specific need with customer experience more so than it retires older tech. I mean, you still need a data warehouse. You still need your other tools. I mean, it doesn't make other things go away. It just gives you ability to provide better experience. Awesome. Um, gentlemen, this has been great. We are almost at time. Um, this, this has been a lot of fun. Um, we will have, this is recorded. It will be posted on our site. We'll do a recap for some of the top things that were discussed. Uh, I would like to do this again. I think uh, the CDP space is moving so quickly. We look, we very much concentrated on preparing for a CDP. I think uh, next time I wanna talk about like what to do when the CDP is, is there, right? Like what are the things that customers should take into account? Because 
that's where, in many cases, the vendors like the Adobe and ActionRQ are out of the picture. We're coming in. And, and that's not where the CDP journey ends. I feel like this is the beginning and there is a, the future is continuing to evolve and technology is becoming you know, much more powerful. Um, that I would, would love to talk through how what will be your uh, POV on uh, how customers should prepare for post stand up, post implementation. This Sounds has been great. Good. Thank you so much. And thanks for people who attended and we'll be in touch soon. Have a great one. All right. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.